Alain Gigato was a French domestic servant and serial killer. She is believed to have murdered as many as 36 people with arsenic over a period of 18 years. After an initial period of activity, between 1833 and 1841, she seems to have stopped for nearly 10 years before a final spree in 1851. Alain Gigato was born on a small farm in Plauenig, near Lorian in Brittany. She lost her mother at the age of seven and was sent to work with two aunts who were servants at the rectory of Bubri. After 17 years, she accompanied an aunt to the town of Seglian. She became a cook for the curé where an incident arose where she was accused of adding hemp from his grain house to his soup. Her first suspected poisoning occurred in 1833 when she was employed by another priest, Father Francois Le Drogo, in the nearby village of Guern. In the three months, between June 28 and October 3, seven members of the household died suddenly including the priest himself, his aging mother and father, and her own visiting sister, and Gigato. Her apparent sorrow and pious behavior was so convincing she was not suspected. Coming shortly after the cholera epidemic of 1832 the deaths may have been attributed to natural causes. Jugato returned to Bubri to replace her sister where three people died in the course of three months, including her other aunt, all of whom she cared for at their bedside. She continued to Loke Mine, where she boarded with a needleworker, Marie-Jean Lebachet, both Lebachet and her daughter died and a son fell ill. It is possible that the son survived because he did not accept Gigato's ministrations. When in the same town, the widow Lori offered Gigato a room, she died after eating a soup her new boarder had prepared. In May 1835, she was hired by Madame Toussaint and four more deaths followed. By this point in time, she had already put 17 people in their graves. Later in 1835, Gigato was employed as a servant in a convent in Ore, but rapidly dismissed after several incidents of vandalism and sacrilege. Jugato worked as a cook in other households in Ore, then Pontivy, Lorient, and Port Louis where she was employed only briefly in each one. Often, someone fell ill or died. Among her most infamous murders is of a child, Lil Marie Brieger, who died at the Chateau de Soie in May 1841, ten years and one month before her final arrest. Most victims died showing symptoms corresponding to arsenic poisoning, though she was never caught with arsenic in her possession. There is no record of suspected deaths from late 1841 to 1849, but a number of her employers later reported thefts. She was apparently a kleptomaniac and was caught stealing several times. Her career took a new turn in 1849 when she moved to Rennes, the capital city of the region. Although there is not much information stating why she committed these crimes, it can generally be linked to psychological issues. The psychopathology model explains that her offenses can be linked to her psychological problems. It is possible that these problems erupted at a young age after her mother died. It is not uncommon for a child to develop abandoned child syndrome due to the parents' passing. Gigato once stated that murdering people gave her a sense of power, which she enjoyed. In 1850, Gigato joined the household staff of Théophile Bidar, a law professor at the University of Rennes. One of his servants, Rose Tissier, fell ill and died when Gigato tended her. In 1851, one of the other maids, Rosalie Sarazin, fell ill as well and died. Two doctors had tried to save Sarazin and because the symptoms were similar to those of Tissier, they convinced the relatives to permit an autopsy. Gigato aroused suspicion when she announced her innocence before she was even asked anything, and she was arrested on July 1, 1851. Later inquiries linked her to 23 suspected deaths by poisoning between 1833 and 1841, but none of these were thoroughly investigated since they were outside the 10-year limit for prosecution and then there was no scientific evidence. Local folklore has attributed to her many unexplained deaths, some of which were almost certainly due to natural causes. The most reliable estimate is that she probably committed about 36 murders. Chigato's trial began on December 6, 1851 but, due to French laws of permissible evidence and statute of limitations, she was accused only of three murders, three attempted murders and 11 thefts. At least one later case appears to have been dropped since it involved a child and police were reluctant to upset the parents by an exhumation. Gigato's behavior in court was erratic, changing from humble mutterings to loud pious shouting and occasional violent outbursts against her accusers. She consistently denied she even knew what arsenic was, despite evidence to the contrary. Doctors who had examined her victims had not usually noticed anything suspicious, but when the most recent victims were exhumed, they showed overwhelming evidence of arsenic and possibly antimony. The defense lawyer, Maguire d'Orange, made a remarkable closing speech, 
arguing that she needed more time than most to repent and could be spared the death penalty since she was dying of cancer anyway. The case attracted little attention at the time, pushed off the front pages by the coup d'état in Paris. Jagata was sentenced to death by guillotine and executed in front of a large crowd of onlookers on the Champ de Mars and Rennes on February 26, 1852. There are few comprehensive accounts in English. In French, fictionalized accounts. Thanks for watching.